This is a blue lotus flower and it has been used in many cultures for centuries. People brew it, make tinctures from it and even smoke it. And it's said to have some rather curious effects. Maudiphoria, relaxation, libido boost and even slight hallucinations. And yet you can legally buy it in almost any country and any quantity. So I think why not put it to the test? We'll conduct two experiments. Standard brewing of a tea and making a super concentrated extract using a Soxlet apparatus. The primary psychoactive compound in Blue Lotus is nociferin, and it's legal in most countries. There is also occasional mention of apomorphine, found in one samples and not others. This substance actually used to treat Parkinson's disease and impotence. In terms of safety, Blue Lotus isn't considered toxic in moderate amounts and doesn't contain any particularly dangerous compounds. So. Ancient psychoactive or pretty flower? Let's find out. Everything is food safe and experiment is conducted strictly for scientific and entertainment purposes. Do not try this at home. I ordered dried flowers, but they turn out to be not quite dry enough. So I'm spreading them out on a baking tray and popping them in the oven for about an hour at 60 degrees Celsius. Now they need to be ground up. For that, I'm using a blender. Quick unboxing, throw the flowers in and grind, but not into dust. If the particles are too fine, they could clog the socks extractor making the extraction process a nightmare. The ideal size is around from 3 to 5 millimeters. I could sift out bigger chunks and grind them separately, but of course I'm not doing that. Place a layer of cotton wool at the bottom, but don't pack it too tightly or it will clog the system. Fill it with the ground lotus. My socket is on the smaller side, so I'll be splitting this into three batches. Add another layer of cotton wool on top to keep everything in place. Pour the food grade ethanol into the flask. Turn on the steering and heating. The ethanol heats up, boils, evaporates, condenses, drips onto the plant material, extracts active compounds, and when the liquid level reaches its maximum, the siphon dumps the extract back into the flask. This cycle repeats over and over, until the plant has given up all its good stuff. I ran this process five times for two batches. But then this happened. Smash that like button so I can buy a new socklet. You definitely have a question. Why just not make some tea? Well, because nociferin doesn't dissolve well in water, ethanol does a much better job extracting desired alkaloids, leaving behind everything unnecessary. I transfer the extract into a second flask, but first I filter it through cotton to remove any small particles from the solution. Next up, distillation. Assemble the distillation setup, turn on the heat. The ethanol evaporates, passes through the condenser, where it cools and drips into the receiving flask. What's left in the flask is a thicker concentrate, with the ethanol gradually evaporating, but we do not let it fully dry out. I transfer the remaining liquid into a tray and pop it into the oven at 50 degrees Celsius for a few hours. And in the end, we are left with a thick raisin with traces of essential oil. Now, since the nociferin content in the flowers is incredibly low, micrograms really, I won't be isolating it separately. I want to transfer this raisin into this vial, but in this current state that's going to be a bit tricky. So I made a bit of ethanol to dissolve raisin back, making it easier to transfer. To put things into perspective, contained in this extract roughly 18 dried flowers. A standard tea usually contains just one flower. Since nociferin barley dissolves in water, the amount in tea is practically negligible. So in crude terms, this vial contains nociferin from 18 flowers. Sounds promising. So one flower in each cup of tea, pour in hot water and let it steep for 10 minutes. You can add some lemon or other acid to your tea because nociferin and other alkaloids are more water soluble in acidic aqueous solution. Crazy doc, this one. Okay, so for such a serious experiment, I need an assistant, team, a professional tester of subactive substances. What do you think about the smell of this flower? I think it smells like honey and uh like flower. Yeah, definitely, this is a flower. According to the data I have, nociferin takes about 30 minutes to kick in when taken orally. So we will drink, wait a bit, and then honest review. Okay, so I definitely feel some sort of relaxation. It's feeling of calmness. And the strange, the strange feeling for me that I feel lightness in legs and arms. Yeah, you are completely relaxed and calm. Yeah, and one more point that is the same feeling, very similar to feeling when you go into the sauna. After yeah. sauna, you're jumping in an ice bus, and after ice bus, you feel like, oh, 
you feel very relaxed. But no strong effects, no hallucinations. As mentioned before, Nuciferin doesn't dissolve well in water. So this concentrate will be much more interesting. I'm a bit uh, nervous of trying this stuff. So here is the deal. If this video will get 100 likes, I will uh, do another part of this video, a separate video where I'm actually uh, trying this stuff. Remember, this all is only for scientific and entertainment purposes, so do not try this at home. Subscribe, like and see you later.